Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have two special guests today on this show, and it is Mara Siegel and Ken Ashby. And they have an amazing topic that, that they want to talk about. They've been on uh, t TEDx talks. They have been doing, you know, devoting their lives to this topic, and they are just amazing. They have a great background that they're going to share with you, and they're, they want to master the relationship for the human connection, you know, when it comes to at home and at work, you know, having that human connection with your, your partner, your friend, the people that you work around, because it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be a relationship where you're married. It could be at work, you know, relationships around us worldwide. But the qu question is, how do you keep those healthy human connections with these people that you are with all the time? How do we, we, we actually listen to the person, understand who they are, communicate, connect and have healthy, happy, and productive relationships with these individuals. And Maris and, and Ken are going to show you how today. So guys, tell everybody a little about yourself, what you do. I'm very happy to have you both on this show. You guys have an amazing story and I'm just, uh, you know, so excited to have you both on today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for including us today, by the way, and for all the amazing work that you're doing with your show and offering phenomenal visibility and just and really engagement with people and connection, right? Human it's, human connection. So your your setup for for this conversation is is really is really perfect. Yeah. Do you want to you want to jump in for? No, second? I was right. just going to say the same thing. We're so happy to be here. And as we were saying before, that you you spend every show that you have, you're connecting you're connecting people with a relationship that they have, and I think that that's the the area that we're working in is this relational intelligence, relational leadership, the way you understand that there are thousands of relationships in our lives and the ones that we pay attention to and the ones that we have respect for and that we have a responsibility for. And a couple of those couple of uh, characteristics um, strengthen the ability of a relationship to survive, to thrive, and to be productive. And whenever we have those relationships where we decide we're not going to be resilient, we're not going to hang in there, oh, it's, too, it's too hard, or we have a relationship, I don't know where this person is, I don't know what's happening, or that yeah. we haven't reframed our, our approach to the relationship. So we're focusing on those four factors, respect, responsibility, reframing, and resilience as the key to building thriving relationships and recognizing that our human story is governed by relationships. I'll just add one more thing that we kind of came on this. I'm a singer songwriter for many years, all my adult life. And we realized that think about your favorite song, your movie or book or Broadway play. Uh, they're all written about one thing, relationships. Every one of those has a relationship at the center. And many of them have multiple relationships and connected and strategies. So everything we do in life is so powered by relationships. Wars are started by relationships or ended because of relationships. And Maris and I were reading the other day that corporations spend about $97 billion in 2023 on customer relationships and they think that's going to grow to 230 billion dollars in the next 10 years so the money's going there and we get to work on our own personal area of this idea that we're in a, in a relationship revolution yeah. i kind of went on and on didn't i no, no. you should smack me i were just going on and on <laughs> that one no that was no it was it, it was great and look i i i think that you know it the, the bottom the bottom line for all of us and and i think certainly we saw this during covid we are all connected right we're all connected as humans first that that is the bottom line we're all connected as humans first and every single bottom line in this country business personal it doesn't matter. Every bottom line begins with a relationship. That's yeah. where it starts, right? So, you know, for us over the years, you know, we have been, we've been in the relationship marketing space for years. We've been executive producers for years, you know, produce Super Bowl halftimes, parts of the Olympics, 
papal visits. I mean, all kinds of amazing things and very culturally rich experiences too. So part of how we really launched our leadership coaching business is because we were in the relationship marketing business for years. So we would get hired by corporations and not-for-profits, um, global commemorations, and they would come to us as kind of the culture people and say, okay, we want to create this amazing event experience celebrating the 400th anniversary of America, you know, honoring, honoring the Native American, you know, tribes and commemorating their participation, looking at our history. The Pope is coming. We want, we want to handle something, you know, with the Pope's visit. Brands, you know, across the board from large finance companies to an IBM to a credit card company coming to us to really support building their relationships with their clients. And in the end, it's all the same. We're building relationships to support people feeling something that drives an engagement. So yes. we talk about informing, inspiring, engaging, and empowering people and teams across the board, because that's how we live prospering lives and thriving lives. So that's kind of the cornerstone of the work that we do and um, centered around these four universal relationship rhythms and really looking at what are the best ways to bring the strengths, the people skills and our soft skills forward at a time when hard skills used to be all that. These yeah. soft skills, these relational skills, how we're communicating and connecting with each other are equally as important now as the hard skills. Because the only way we're going to get moving through those hard skills is the human connection to be able to drive, whether or not it's AI, whether or not it's straight corporate business, it doesn't matter. The human connection, the people power will always be paramount, no matter what. And that's the center of our work. I think it's amazing. I, you know, I... I think it's so important, you know, the corporate industry has invested a lot of money into building relationships, but I still see in the small business and the medium sized business world that there is still a lot of hardcore communication going on and that that softness, that that empathy, that, you know, caring and, and inspiring talks, I think are missing from a lot of businesses. I think people, you know, even though a lot of people realize how important it is Sometimes I will work with clients and they're not, they're not utilizing those skills yet. You know, they're still in the old school day, you know, or they have a lot of stress on them and they're not really, you know, um, verbalizing the right way to connect with their employees or the people at home or the, you know, because you, usually when a person has trouble at the workforce and they're not communicating well, even though they go home, they still have their those connections of connecting and having those those uh, meaningful relationships. They're lacking those skills at home as well. So I'm it's, so glad you said that. So glad you said that because we specifically we talk about these are not these are not skills, professional skills or personal skills. These are life skills mm -hmm. that are about. And when we talk about these four key relationship rhythms. And you think about them in terms of rhythms and why do we say rhythms? Because when we wake up in the morning, we always have a choice. The one thing we know above all else is besides change, we also always have a choice. Now in right. the moment of choice, it's a question of, are we choosing to respond or react to what might be happening in our world at that point? Right. So those choices impact whether or not we're making these choices at home or at work. Every choice we make all day determines our future. Mm -hmm. So if we're feeling badly about ourselves and something's happened at home and we take that to the office and we start our rhythm in this head banging music because, you know, God only knows the dogs have been on the bed at this point. The kids are asking for breakfast. The alarm clock is late. I'm already on my phone. I've answered 12 emails. And that's before I even got in the shower, right? <laughs> Seriously, so that so think about that. And I just described the experience of how many billions of people on this planet. Yeah. So that so that's the whole point of really what connects us first is 
we're all connected, looking for opportunities, looking for possibilities, looking to have a great life, have romance, have a great business. We're all in search of the same things. And so yes. that means that the skills that we learn in our business life mm -hmm. equally work at home in our, in our personal life because we're learning how to communicate clearly, yes. how to address expectations, because those are two of the biggest issues that actually support building or breaking down trust. So right. these skills and these skill building, and when we look at this and we say, okay, let's look at each of these, respect, responsibility, reframing, and resilience. Mm -hmm. Within each of those, there are key tenants, there are key rhythms that we know work. And always those rhythms begin with the most important relationship first, which is with ourselves. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, I think it's just to add to that, this morning idea, this morning choice that we all make is really one of, of responding or reacting. So when you wake in the morning, are you just responding or are, are you responding or are you just reacting to whatever whatever the new thing is or whatever the shiny object is that comes into your life? We just right. um, we just wrote an article for the Best You magazine, and it was called the RSVP pause. Mm -hmm. So we, we all know we've gotten RSVPs in the mail. You get an invitation to a certain party and it says RSVP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean react right it means respond please i do get a little excited though when i get a, a wedding invitation yeah. in the mail so my reaction yeah. might be a little excited yeah, but but <laughs> when we get those rsv when we get those invitations and it says rsvp we take a moment and we respond versus reacting we don't just say oh no i'm not going to that no we we think about our schedule it's put in front of us so we have an opportunity so this idea of responding versus reaction we recommend taking this RSVP pause when you're confronted with something and say, okay, I can react with a knee jerk or I can just breathe for a millisecond yeah. and respond. Right. And we get into trouble as humans, we get into trouble from our reactions and our reactions, you know, as well as we, reactions have nothing to do with the present moment. Right. It's all from the past. 100%. In our book, in our book, The R Factor, um, we we did not want to write a how-to book. We wrote a really, you know, we, we wrote basically a, um, a fiction. It's a story. And it's a story about these two individuals. She is a big um, concert promoter, producer, and um, she's a single mom. And um, she travels all over the globe with her work. And then he is a really successful finance guy by day and a singer songwriter by night who wants to be a more full time who wants to be a more full time singer songwriter and what you see in this story is they find their lives are out of sync and mm -hmm. they along the way they start to identify these four universal rhythms respect responsibility reframing and resilience and they recognize how they are showing up in their personal lives and their professional lives and the impact of how all of those when working together, how they create this energy, this flow, which is what we've talked about with us. Because people always say to us, wait a minute, hang on. You're a couple in love and you work together 24 seven. How do you do that without killing each other and still have a personal life? <laughs> <laughs> it's hysterical. I mean, it is the one thing people ask us. And when I tell you down to, Ken and I were in a meeting many years ago. I actually, we, no, but go on. <laughs> so we were in a meeting many years ago and we were preparing for this meeting and it was with, it was with a governor and I'm not going to say which one is with a governor. And we, you know, we were really careful about people knowing we were working together. I mean, <clears throat> obviously the people who hired us knew that. And even though we weren't married yet, that we were living together and we were a couple, et cetera. We walk into this meeting and we sit down for this formal presentation. The first thing the governor says is, so how does that work? <laughs> we, just, we just started laughing. It's like, we just looked at each other and went. I don't care what you're coming here to talk like, to me about, but just tell me how that works. 
It was so funny. And and what what we what we realized in that moment, not that we hadn't known it, but in that moment was, wow, there's something that works between us. And what is that? And is that something we can take and apply because we were already using it in our business. So right. is it something we could take and apply? And so we really, and so we launched a leadership company because we recognize that the gap between these issues are always the people challenges, the communication, yeah. the people skills, et cetera. And so that was, so we launched our, our leadership company to really build on and meet that need in the marketplace and to really support large and small scale companies into, into this next evolution of their business. I think that's fabulous. I also would like to know, how do you guys not kill each other? Many people have asked my asked me the same question. They're like, you know, if you work with your husband, you could do, you know, you could make your husband's business thrive. And I'm like, and then my husband will look at me and I'll look at him. He's like, no, we can't work together. <laughs> we'll end up killing each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I would just say, I used to say it's just because Maris does everything I tell her to do. Mm hmm. Yes. <laughs> on some days. On some days. I, but first, I would qualify that by saying I ask her first what she wants to do, and then I tell her to do that. But, <laughs> uh, you know, no, I think we started, we looked at our relationship and said, you know, based on these four relationship rhythms, we respect each other. So we have deep respect for the qualities that both of us bring to the relationship, because without that, there is no way to have a relationship. Oh, 100%. And secondly is we take we we are responsible. Both of us have a responsibility. It's not one or the other. We are right. both equally responsible. And yes. understanding that it is crucial. And you know, resilience certainly there's ups and downs. Sometimes yeah. I make a mistake, you know, once a year. <laughs> Once a year, I'm working on uh, 2050 right now, but uh, yeah. resilience is crucial to all of our relationships. 100%. And then this idea of reframing, you know, that maybe things aren't just black and white. Maybe there are other possibilities. And in the world of quantum, quantum field, I'm sure you've heard of this, that there are infinite possibilities for everything. It's 100%. not just one or the other way. So really... Finding blending those things into our lives, I think, makes us. And I really love her too, and I know that I'm I'm a lucky guy, so I would say that as well. Uh, yeah. and so um, yeah, that's that's how we work together. I, it, you know, I think I think too the you know the the notion of, and this is why we say yeah, look, we are a blessed couple. There's no question, and it takes work. We have a lot going on in our family right now. We've had some some urgent issues come up over the last year. And you know, I've I've said to Ken a number of times, thank heavens it's now versus five years ago, because we've been doing so much work over the years, right? To to really to do our own work. And, you know, I think that one, we also really enjoy each other. I mean, it you you get to as as intense as the work is, we also play as hard as as we work, and work also becomes play. And so when yeah. you're in a space of really following your passion, you know, the, the walls, the, there are less walls and there's just this flow between the space. And so we're in this space of play. And the other thing that is really very important, and this is something I hope that people take away with your teams and at home, is replace judgment with curiosity and discovery. Yes. There's no need to be in judgment. There's really no right. need. Judgment doesn't serve anyone. Judgment right. only creates a space of closed energy, right? Yes. So when you're in this space of responding versus reacting, when you're in a space of communicating clearly, when you're right. in a space of really being curious, bringing discovery forward and hearing somebody and looking at that situation saying, huh, I wonder why that person said what they said, or I wonder why they reacted the way they reacted, or I wonder to be in that space of childlike wonder. And yeah. it changes everything because when we also approach leadership from that perspective, 
and we come at it from a heart space versus just the head space, the heart space allows an openness of just being an exploration. Yes. I wonder about that. Mm -hmm. What would it be like if I listened differently, right? All of these things that are so important. And um, wow, what if I saw this from their perspective versus just what I'm bringing to the table? Right. These seem so simple, but these are the things that within these four R's, are really about how we live our life, being authentic, right? Yes. How we're communicating. When we're communicating with each other, this expectations piece is huge. Expectations yes. without agreement mm -hmm. create premeditated resentment every time. Yes. So, so right here that. So when we're communicating, part of what works is the clarity of our words with each other, not yes. making assumptions. Right. Right. And so and being, and being in agree in, and, being, and aligned with our expectations, you know, being aligned, because as soon as we are not aligned with our expectations, then, as Mary said, it, it creates premeditated resentment. This this idea of we can look at our lives and say, I think one of the things that supports us is not taking things for granted. Yes. If you look around your life, the things you take for granted are the are the relationships you're going to lose. Yes. Because every time we take something for granted and we as you told us a story about one of your working situations and somebody stepped over you and didn't offer support. Right. That taking for granted a human is crucial in every aspect of our lives. So pay attention to what you're taking for granted. And one yeah, great way to that. one yeah. great way to to not take things for granted is another secret for us is basically gratitude. Yeah. Where are you? What are you grateful for? What, how in any situation with any person, there is a moment of gratitude. There is a recognition. There's a opportunity for gratitude. And so really acknowledging. I mean, I, th I think the you know when we look at what is going on in the world right now and, and in the marketplace, like, right? We are so divided in terms of politics. We are so divided in terms of social justice. We are so divided. I mean, the divides are there. Yes. And here's the thing. Until we step in from a humanity perspective and mm -hmm. shifting the divides in our own lives with our personal relationships, with our friendships, with our spouses, with our family, other family members, with our partners, and in business, unless we start doing it from the inside out and seeing our role in that, will yes. any of this change? And so, you know, we have over the years, we, we were just honored with this remarkable um, Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award for volunteer service. And I bring that forward because it was a remarkable experience going through a lifetime of these incredible organizations we've gotten to volunteer with and support. And as we, as we looked for the list and we looked at respect, responsibility, reframing and resilience, mm -hmm. we looked at the list and we said, this is interesting. How many of these organizations no longer exist because they couldn't figure out the communication challenges, their financial structure, they're like all the things that it takes. And in the end, where their challenges were, it came down to people. Where their yes. successes were, it came down to people. So when we went back and looked at that list and we said, you know, in the end, the human capacity is what's going to fix or fail this planet, yes. period. And so that's where we that's where we all come in. And so when we can be clear in our communications, then, you know, God bless the people, all these people right now who are suffering because there's war going on in the world. The human atrocities going on on this planet right now. And yet in our own backyard, we're facing the same issues with hunger, homelessness and violence of all types. Yeah. Take care of ourselves first, work on ourselves from the inside out. And when we're in the business setting, 
when we can bring gratitude forward and acknowledge our teams, simple things, every day, every day bringing forward a win yeah. on the team because the team gets to feel the success and the accomplishment of that. And your team at home gets to feel the same. So every day it's, a, it's an acknowledgement. It's a thank you for listening. It's mm -hmm. a creating a practice that you do with your teams in the morning, a gratitude practice or with a, with your family, whatever that looks like. And if you're doing it on your own at home, then do your gratitude practice by taking the 20 minutes of either prayer or meditation, look at yourself in the mirror and acknowledge yourself for what occurred yesterday and for what you have coming up today. Yes. Because we can always call on that gratitude all day long. When we're in the middle of choice and craziness yes. and life is facing us with, with an opportunity and a challenge. Yes. Breathe, face mm -hmm. it. We have something called freely acknowledge current emotion. Face it. Just yeah. face it. Freely acknowledge current emotion and just own what's coming up and be right. grateful for the opportunity. 100%. 100%. I feel like in today's world, we are lacking respect for each other. Like we have the, the lack of respect for other human beings has decreased, I feel, you know, over time, you know, people aren't respecting each other. And like you've mentioned before, which I think is so important is that just because someone has a different, different belief or a different way of doing things, you know, we should respect that and not place judgment on that person. We can't expect others to live their lives according to what we feel is the right way. It might be the right way for us personally, but it does not necessarily mean it's the right way for others. And people need to respect that. And, you know, I think there is a lot of labelism in our society. There is a lot of stigmatism, you know, that, you know, there is a lot of, of, of hating just because people aren't doing things the way they think it should be. You know, I don't know where all this hate came about, but it just came in, in big clusters and it, and it came, you know, in a very powerful way. And we need to stop and pull that hate out. And we need to start respecting each other as human beings, because like you said, without the, without the human connection, we have nothing. We have, this world is nothing without human connection. Even animals connect in packs. Mm -hmm. Every connects, you know, we need that, that connection. And in order to connect, we have to respect one another. And like you said, we have to have gratitude for each other. It's not about what they're not. It, it's about what they are, you know? Yeah. And I think people have to start looking more positively at, at situations and people and not look at their flaws because, they, you know, if you really think about it from a psychological point of view, when you look at other people's flaws and you focus on what they're not, it's usually because you're not wanting to focus on your own flaws and your own imperfections. And That's it's a great- mirror. Seeing the mirror, right? Because everybody really is a mirror of us in some way. If I'm not yes. feeling good about myself, I'm probably seeing that in some way in someone else. Mm -hmm. And yes, and that you're you're so right. And that and that sh that shows up. And it's one of the reasons that we talk about it's an inside out job. Mm -hmm. Most people were not taught growing up about how to treat ourselves first. I came yeah. from a very close family, close Jewish family, can close, you know, religious Baptist family. His dad was a, was a Baptist minister. And, and over the years, we were always taught how to treat other people. Yes. So what's so important now, and it's so much we spend our coaching on is helping people feel like they belong first to themselves. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. so the idea of loving first from the inside out kindness first from the inside out, right? The, the human consciousness, this connection, the power of understanding that if we're not respecting ourselves and respect and treating ourselves respectfully and the messages we're telling ourselves, I'm not good enough, I can't do it, then it's gonna be difficult for other people to ultimately treat us that way. And one of the things we say at work is, remember at work, when you're in a work environment and you're meeting people for the first time and you've got people on your team and you're working on a project together, remember first, not the negative in this person being in this environment, but 
this person was hired into this company because they came with gifts. Yeah. Be curious about what their gifts are so that when you're in a room with them, whether in a meeting or on a project, your curiosity goes to what can I learn from this person? What can I gain from them versus being in a situation that says they're not this? Mm -hmm. The whole different reframing, it's a whole different perspective on that. Yeah. We, I think it's, we get to, you talked about the divides and the separation and we have something that we call the legacy separator, legacy separation. So much of our division and our history comes from historicity, comes from not something we experienced, but something our parents, Generational. Or their parents or their parents before them experienced. This yeah. legacy separation, we buy into it without asking, as um, the great book, The Four Agreements, I'm sure you're familiar with, um, this book asks, or, you know, you... We grew up in cultures. We grew up in a certain lifestyle. We grew up in a certain family. But we, as, as adults, we get to look at it and say, "Is do I agree with this? Right. So this legacy separation comes from taking something for granted. Okay, well, well I'm, um, I'm a Baptist. Or that's the way it's you always know, been. Or that's yeah, the way that it's always been. Versus, versus so uh, this legacy separation is, is something that I think we're all beginning to now realize that hmm, if we're going to turn this corner, if we're going to see people coming together and then we get to revisit, what is it that caused this? What is it that caused me to think this way? Right. What I agreed to that led me down this path. Right. I like that. You know, and it's so true. A lot of people do things not because they really want to, because they feel they have to, because that's the way mom and dad did it. And oh, and, and their mom and dad did it because that's the way their mom and dad did it. And the, and the fear of disappointing their parents, even when their parents have passed on, they're yeah. still... <laughs> They're still worry about disappointing them, making decisions accordingly to what their parents would want instead of stopping for a second and say, what do I really want? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and being and, and giving giving a, a permission around that, too. And, you know, it's interesting over over the years, we've been you know blessed to, to produce some pretty phenomenal global experiences all tied to relationship and and leadership. And had there not been, when I think about the Pope coming to ground zero and, um, and I had responsibility there to, I had been working on the, on the recovery effort um, mm -hmm. for a number of months and years later now as ground zero now was, its pit was being filled up. The foundation was being built. Um, right. Pope Benedict came to the um, to Ground Zero as kind of just before it got filled in and was being built. And the experience for me to be standing there, I mean, seriously, nice Jewish girl. I'm sitting here looking at this moment, creating a moment. There are probably maybe just 30 of us standing on this on this um, riser that we had put together with the families and the governor and the mayor and people who had lost generations because their parents or grandparents or you know had had passed away already and and there were also three generations standing on the platform which was also remarkable and up above was about 300 um 300 media uh, way up above who were shooting down into the you know into this one spot and what was really remarkable to me as i look at that moment you know the the Pope had this commitment of heart to want to be because that's what popes do. That's who they are. They are at the heart there of the people, right? right. And and I and I stood there watching this moment as he lit the candle, and I realized, okay, nice Jewish girl, Baptist people, Catholics and Christians, and all types of people who are standing at this base wow, if the world could just recognize that this moment is what united us, it's not yeah. what divided us. And right. it was such a powerful moment and so humble and looking at that and saying, 
this is what businesses get to be. This is what families get to be. This is what our world gets to be, is this recognition of what unites us first, is the yeah. respect of what unites us first, is the mm -hmm. responsibility of standing in that space and recognizing I have authority in my business to be able to support my people, to be able to give them strength and authority. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to rise my business. And that's what's going to rise my family. And so for us, it's a passion. Yes. We are, we are, we are committed to connecting millions of people and getting them to commit and shift a culture to really be human connection first. Yes. And it is so important that they make that connection. And it's so, so important that we learn that this is an ongoing lifestyle that you should incorporate into your life and not wait for tragedy to happen. Because a lot of times I feel like we go through a cycle where, you know, tragedy happens, everyone unites. And then as time goes on, you start to see a little bit of separation. And then, you know, and then you see more separation and then something happens and then everybody unites. So it's like, it's like, it's like a family that when you think about your family and everyone starts to get married, then they have kids and then you see less of them, you know, and it's only, you know, only once in a while where you have those big parties where everybody comes that you see everybody. Well, why does it have to be like that? Why do we have to wait until something happens for us to be united as one? Why can't we develop the skills and apply them to our daily lives so we can have that united way of living so we could have that respect so we could have that resilience so we could apply those, those methods of framework that you discussed into our daily lives so we could have that human connection with people at work people at you know the people we live with at home and the people our friends and people that we meet you know why does it have why do we have to you know um apply it just when it's the right time but apply it all the time well and you know mm -hmm. and, and the bottom line you know what I've heard you just ask a couple of times is why? And here's, and here's the reason for the why is because it's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a choosing and it's a collective choosing. And it's a collective choosing that says, I am committed to creating an R factor life of respect, responsibility, reframing and resilience. I know that I get to be supported and I get to support other people. And simply stated, that's what it takes. And, mm -hmm. and, and it takes a recognition that, you know what? It's okay if it's messy. I mean, I, I was probably the least vulnerable, per vulnerable person on the planet in terms of having people see my vulnerability. I could always be vulnerable for everybody else. And what mm -hmm. I've learned over the years is that if I haven't learned how to accept support and see my weaknesses, then that doesn't work in a personal relationship nor in a professional relationship. Right. And, you know, I think that I would have to say that probably one of Ken's biggest challenges over the years with me was really getting me to trust that vulnerability could be my superpower and to trust that this person would keep showing up for me and vice versa. Right. right. Because why? Because I have a baggage from the past that I was hanging on to. Yeah. But when we come into a business and a personal space from a place of curiosity, from a place of knowing that I belong here, I belong mm -hmm. in this job because they hired me to meet a need. I'm meeting yeah. a need. I'm mm -hmm. in this personal relationship. We meet a need for each other. And in our professional lives and personal lives, it's all the same thing. And so I think that if we commit to an R factor culture, to this relational intelligence, this consciously connecting, Yes. I think the world would be a very different place, you, a very different place. Stacy, you, know? you raised something with one of your whys, which I love that you asked that. Why? You're curious. Uh, this why of why do we have to only when something bad happens? When something, when we have those tragic moments, family-wise, country-wise, world-wise, when we have those, those moments of tragedy, it breaks us out of the taking for grantedness. Complacency. It in breaks us out of what we've taken for granted and living in that state of taking for grantedness. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it breaks us out and we get, it's that smack in the face. It's that I could have had a V8, you know, whatever. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm dating myself a little bit there, but um, it's unfortunate that that's what it is, and that finding a way to break ourselves out of that taking for granted, whatever it is, before the tragedy happens, right, is, is the way we can connect always. Yeah. And, and that's unified. part of creating the lifestyle. That, yeah, that's and, yeah. and it's what you said earlier. It really is adopting a lifestyle versus a moment in time. Mm-hmm. That this is how we live our lives all the time. And that right. if we live our lives in that space, then when it's messy, it's okay because we know that we're resilient and we respect the situation we're in and we're responsibly navigating our way through and we're seeking and accepting support. Right? right. So now all of a sudden, so if you look at any of the, any situation, any of your day, and you look at it through a lens of respect, responsibility, reframing, resilience, say, wow, what's my R factor today? Okay. Got it. Ooh. Okay. I might've just respected myself today by saying I was going to the gym and not going to the gym. Right. Mm-hmm. right? I might've respected myself today by saying, you know what? I'm not going to the gym today and I get to have ice cream. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's all of that and it's also being okay messy when we're messy yeah uh, you know and and accepting that because in a work environment when somebody makes a mistake mm-hmm. if we don't come in and drop it down and say doggone you made a mistake and blah 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 versus okay let's talk about that what do you think happened there okay got it all right well let's work on correcting that got it and Maybe something wasn't clear in the communication. We get to understand it. First, we get to fix it and address it. Then we get to understand how we could maybe shift that the next time. Where where did that land? It's a very different approach to life, is looking at life as what's working versus looking at life as what's not working. Yes. And I think one of the important factors that you brought up earlier was that you need to take care of yourself first. And so many people have shame and guilt uh, for not feeling that they're worthy enough to take care of themselves. They feel like they have to take care of others before they take care of themselves. And then you see the difference. You see them wither in a way. You can tell by their face, they're drawn, they're tired, they're burnt out. And But they feel guilty reaching out and actually taking action and, and taking care of themselves first. And I see that so many times over and over again. But the, my, my thing that I would tell people is how could you care for others when you can't even care for yourself? Mm. You know, really think about that. You know, you want to take care of this one. You feel like you're obligated to take care of this one. But how are you going to do everything if you're not putting yourself on the, po- on the podium first, you know, and giving yourself time to renew itself? And understanding, I think, I think it's equally important to understand what it is that you can do for yourself. Like this permission, COVID in some ways, you know, we we talk about talk about it as our crowning transformation because it was a remarkable time for us. I mean, during COVID, we, you know, we we made a commitment and we said, we want to manifest a TEDx talk. We want to manifest best, best-selling books. We want to want to manifest, you know, uh, launching and really growing our leadership company. And all of those things happened. And that was during a time that it could have been a moment to freeze, but it was in a lot of ways, our our most open space. And we're now featured in 21 leadership and personal um, development centered books. And then we launched our own book. And I say all this because for us, that space, the coronavirus space for us was an open door for permission to grow ourselves, to do our own work and to see other ways to support others. And we saw this great connection between us and this collective breath that the globe took. That was this, just this pandemic pause that allowed this new space for people. And so what we're seeing is while it has created challenges, we're also seeing the opportunity to build greater authentic connections with ourselves, with each other, and with our clients and customers that will impact our business. Yes. You know. I think that's amazing. Now, tell me about the book that you published. So the R Factor, the R Factor, it's really fun. So the R Factor is, as I said, the R Factor is Relationship. relationship immersion, right? We're, we are in connection with someone 24 seven from the time we wake up in the morning. 
And so right. this book really talks about evolving our human relationship story from the standpoint of these two individuals. You want to talk about it for a minute? Yeah, well, Maris gave you a little preview of it before. It is a story. And um, they, during the story, it's not really a love story. They don't, they connect, they meet each other, but it's not a love story in that sense. But mm -hmm. throughout the book, they connect with the, these, these relationship rhythms, respect. For instance, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he's driving down the road or coming back from the airport. He pulls out of the parking garage and there's just a big sign on the side of the building that says respect. Mm -hmm. He's like, what the, where's that? What's, you know, where is yeah. that? So they, these things are revealed in a certain way to them throughout the book. And then they apply them to their lives where as a songwriter, he realized that First off, he was writing good songs, but not quite getting there and realizing that he had a relationship with the song. It wasn't just about writing a song. It was about having a relationship with the song. And right. so he realized this respect aspect of it was one of the first places to start. Okay, do I respect myself? Do I respect myself as a writer? Do I respect what I write? Do I respect what other people say about it because he gets into trouble in the beginning because someone doesn't doesn't resonate with him. He might have reacted versus <laughs> responded to feedback. That's right. <laughs> so he got <laughs> feedback on one of his songs and it wasn't what he wanted to hear. And he just was like, what do you know? You know, you don't yeah. know anything about this. Obviously, so throughout the book, there is this thread that keeps going through and then how they apply this in their lives, we tried to tell that story. And I got to tell you, we had so much fun just, you know, creating the story, creating, and yes, there's parts of it that have some of us in it, but it's not our biography. It's not. Well, our there's also, there's also a song. So a song is also written in this um, throughout the, throughout a song gets written in the end and then performed as well called each of us. And it talks about the role that we each have, right? in the world. And so it's a, it's a great read. It's a read now that we're actually seeing go into corporate teams. So they're reading it together because yeah. it's got all these great lessons. So book clubs are reading it. And um, so, yeah, so if anyone's interested, it's available on Amazon. I don't know if you'll put it in your show notes um, or if you just go to our website, because we also wanted to offer people a free gratitude practice guide. So I don't know if you're going to drop our, our, do you want us to give our web address or our email? I'm going to put everything in the description box. So anything yeah, that you will put in the description box. So, yeah, so the gratitude practice guide is a great um, tool to be able to use in the morning with your teams or to be able to use it personally or um, or also, you know, in, individually uh, as well. So that's a fun tool. And then you also, there's a link to purchase the book there if you're interested in purchasing the book. I tell you a fun story about the, so this song that Maris alluded to that we used throughout the book was a song that that I wrote. Um, and when we were doing, on the day that our book came out, we did a podcast uh, uh, called Beyond the Box, a great podcast with Judith Rich. And we did our, we, we talked about the book and then she said, well, there's a song in here. Can you, you know, what does it sound like? Can you, so we sang this song for her on her podcast live. And she, then after the podcast was over, she got back to us. She says, she said, I, I can't believe it. I've been looking for a theme song for two or three years for my podcast. So she actually <laughs> took the song and made it the theme song for her podcast. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing. So when you look at that, so look at that from the standpoint of respect, responsibility, like all the, all the pieces that go into and that moment of what you want to use my, you know, all those moments that we get into that and yeah, it's just been our our journey has really been um, a blessed and remarkable one. And this human connection piece is the name of the game, right? Yes. In the end, in the end, that's what it's all about. Doesn't yeah. matter what interaction you're having, people first, everything else will follow. A hundred percent. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. Now, what services do you provide to people also? So we do, we, so our, our our work in the leadership space is we do business leadership um, coaching. 
And mm -hmm. so we work very specifically with teams and individuals on the people skills and the power tools to really drive those soft skills, especially um, really working on that. We also host um, workshops. We do workshops as well, keynote speaking, and um, and then obviously, um, you know, consulting with with teams as well. So we love what we do. We have great fun. And um, our mission is to get our, our book and our work in as many hands as possible to be able to touch as many relationships as possible to grow them and evolve them. That's wonderful. Now, where can people find you? Our, so our website is Siegel Leadership Global, S-E-G-A-L, leadershipglobal.com. And that's where you can also download our free gratitude practice guide. You can follow a link to purchase the book. You can send us an email there directly. And um, yeah, and we'd love to connect. And before we go, if there was like a couple of turning points that you just wanted to emphasize to the listeners. What are like two or three things that you really want to point out to the listeners from our conversation that you really want them to leave with an important message? Well, I would, I think from my standpoint, I would say this whole idea of of what you look at what you're taking for granted. Just mm -hmm. look at your life and say, what am I taking for granted? And focus right. on that. Focus yeah. on finding the finding the energy and finding the gratitude for something that maybe you've taken for granted for too long. Right. Yeah, you know, I think there are a couple. One is the idea around choices. The mm -hmm. choices we make all day determine our future. And we always have a choice in whether or not we choose to react versus respond. So right. I think that's a big one. And the other, which we see all the time in our coaching is communications, great communications drive prospering individuals and teams. Yes. Right. Because great communication builds trust and aligns expectations. So words matter. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I got to tell you, today has been an amazing day. Uh, your conversation just blew me through the roof. I think both of you are spectacular and what you're doing is spectacular. I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. This is a topic that really a lot of people really need to understand, learn more about and really apply it to their lives. You know, the concepts that you talked about, the four R's that you, you mentioned, people really have to, you know, look and understand what each R represents and then apply it how can think to themselves, maybe meditate on it. How can I take those four R's and apply it to my daily life? And if people could actually do something like that and take the time to really try to better themselves in that aspect, I think the world will be a much better place. And I think, you know, relationships in at the workforce, at home, like we mentioned, you know, friendships and just overall conversations with individuals, I think would go a lot farther and a lot more productively. So, you know, I, I commend you on what you're doing. I think it's a wonderful topic that you, you're discussing and teaching to others and I hope that you can come back on the show. Maybe we can talk some more. Um, you guys have been Perfect. great. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you. Thank you. So thank much. you. And thanks for everybody who's listening. Yeah, we look forward to hearing from you. Yes. You have a great day. Thank you.